So, I'd like to proclaim to the world that I am a coffee addict. It's true. I'm a bitch without coffee. My friends know it. My family knows it. It's just one of those things that I am... I can't live without my coffee. I wake up in the morning and that's the first thing I do. I go straight to my coffee pot and I make my coffee. And then I do everything else. By the time I brush my teeth, my coffee is made. And after that first cup of coffee, I'm a little bit more social. I feel capable of speaking in almost complete sentences without barking or grumbling or just grunting. Um, and I know other people that are the same way. It's not just me. I recently started getting my frappuccinos with soy in them. This was a big decision for me to make. It was. Um, I had discussed this on many, many visits with my tattoo artist, Addie, who is vegan, and it's just, I, I love cheese, and I love milk in my, with my frappuccinos, because it makes it so creamy, but... I also have noticed that with my frappuccinos, I was feeling kind of funky. And so, last weekend, I decided to get a soy frappuccino, but I had them add whipped cream because, you know, one step at a time. And my favorite guy at Starbucks laughed at me. <laughs> um, and um, I was rather pleasantly surprised how good that soy frappuccino was. It was really, really good. I have since stopped the whipped cream because the whipped cream took on a really weird texture with the soy. Uh, and it's soy had kind of a weird flavor where the whipped cream meant it. it was just, yeah, not such a pleasant meeting of the two things there. So I'm not doing whipped cream on my soy frappuccinos anymore. And I feel a lot better. No more tummy troubles after drinking my soy frappuccinos. And I'm much happier with it. I still get my shot of espresso. And moving on from coffee. Uh, I really have mixed emotions about shampooing my hair tomorrow because I know that the colors can fade. We're back. <laughs> oh man, I'm just like having like totally fucked up issues with my camera. But yeah, I'm having uh, issues with my hair. I, won't, I know the colors are going to fade, and I don't want it to fade, but my scalp itches. Uh, it's just so lame. But tomorrow, I have an appointment with the state agency that paid for my back, at, at my back surgery. And thankfully, it's before my therapy. And... The, the agency, what they're designed to do is they're supposed to rehab people to get them back into the workforce. And that's all fine and dandy. Um, that was my goal when I went in and had back surgery was to go back to work. But none of us, even the doctors, were not expecting the massive blood clots in my leg, having to have three stints put into my abdomen, um, having fibromyalgia get triggered and flared up, having the degenerative joint disease, or, um, disc disease flare and just my whole spine just want to start going crazy, um, having my shoulder 
get a tear in it and have that start degenerating, having my neck start going, it, it's just like, it, it, start, it kicked off like this domino effect. And so I've been really frustrated with some of the calls and letters that I've been getting from this agency. And so I have to go meet with my counselor there tomorrow. And it's a yearly thing. And I know she understands, but it's still kind of, it's frustrating and stressful all at the same time. And I know why they have to do this. Um, my counselor knows the situation. Of course she does because she was, you know, with me the whole time that I was going through all of this medical crap. Um, and I will eventually go through the whole story and show pictures of the x-rays and it's just craziness. Um, but, um, yeah, so I'm not really looking forward to that. Um, and, uh, then I go to therapy and get to unload all of that on her, so then it's kind of like, it's good on one hand, or it's bad on one hand, and then it's good on another, and, um, and then Friday, I'm taking off for the weekend. I'm going to the besties, and we are going to go do something. I don't know what it is. He wants to get away for the weekend. I want to get away for the weekend. Where we're going, we don't know yet, because we don't know what each of us is going to be like financially. We both want to go to the beach. But, you know, financially, um, neither one of us knows if it's, like, feasible for that to happen. But beach therapy is, like, it's becoming, like, a major, major need. Like, this, this big, big need um, to be on the beach. Uh, I need. I, I went through all of my SD cards, and all I got was those little bitty clips, and I'm so, so sad about that, um, because I've never really recovered from my one-day trip down there, which I'll never do again alone, ever, ever, because I just, it, it, it hurts so bad. And my best friend, um, the nurse that I was talking about before, um, well, Anyway, um, we switch roles as far as Thelma and Louise. Sometimes I'm Thelma, sometimes she's Louise, uh, and vice versa. It just kind of varies on what's going on in our lives, depends on what, what, what role we play. Um, so, uh, anyway, she's, she's my nurse friend that is just like, this amazing, strong person, um, and she's been through me, it's, she's been through me, she's been with me through some really hard times, and I've been with her through some really hard times, and, um, you know, we're like family, and, and that's the point of friends, and same with my bestie, you know, we look at each other as best friends. Um, and with best friends comes their families, and our families all melt together in this giant family. And when you take on that role of a best friend with their families, you know, it's like it's one big family. You know, my mom becomes their mom, and vice versa. It's just like, you know, it's just the way life is. We lean on each other through the hard times and the good times, and that's when you, you know, when you find out who your best friend, who your good friends are, who your real friends are, when those bad times come around. I learned who my real friends were when I was diagnosed with fibro after my back surgery. Um, and it, it was kind of heartbreaking for me because I was always doing things, uh, I was always volunteering for things, and without those non-blood family members, even if they don't live by me and if I don't get to see them very frequently, they're still my family. Um, I have a very, very good friend that lives in Ohio. 
I met her when we worked together many years ago. Uh, wow, 10 years, 10, almost 11 years ago. And we're like, you know, we're like sisters. Um, she also has fibromyalgia. And at the time, I was just dealing with arthritis in my knees. Um, my back hadn't really given out a whole lot. It was hurting, but it wasn't like, oh, it wasn't bad. I would get twinges, but, it, you know, I had just had my second knee surgery on my right knee, and it hurt. And she was the one that just, and she just, like, slapped me upside the head with her words. And it really made sense to me and it was basically you can either let your illness control your life and go curl up in in your room on your bed and let it control you and take you down and under um, you know those aren't the exact words she used but it was everything that she said to me made sense and I am so grateful for those words that she said to me because they made me a stronger person inside. And I was able to deal with so much more after that. And we lost touch for a little short time when she moved back to Ohio uh, to help out her daughter while she was going, I believe, while she was going through school. And um, when we got back into touch with each other and we talked on the phone, she was telling me everything that had transpired since she moved up there and how bad the fibro had gotten and how down she had been. And the words that she was telling me were words that I had told her before she smacked me in the head with these, these words that changed me. and. I was able to use those words back at her and you know I just really really hope that I was able to help her in that way as much as she helped me and I do miss her so much I you know I'm hoping that she can come down to Texas this summer and visit because we miss her so much um, anyway enough of that because I'll get all sentimental and cry and I don't want to do that. So as you can see I've changed shirts and location. I apparently ran out of memory on my memory card in my camera. I did not realize that it was only two gigs of memory. <sighs> Man, I'm such a doofus. Uh, that shall be fixed. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, I'm hoping to really get some decent video this weekend. I don't know of what, but I don't, I don't know. Anyway, that's about all I've got for today, except, you know, peace, love, and caffeine, you know, I, I am a caffeine addict, I, I cannot help myself, I have friends who are caffeine addicts, coffee addicts, caffeine addicts, if coffee's your go-to, if five-hour energy's your go-to, whatever, more power to you, yeah. anyway.